the rulemaking in California operate. Under California's Administrative Procedure Act, the APA, there are two forms of rulemaking that are authorized to be conducted by executive branch agencies and departments. It's deemed regular or emergency. And the emergency rulemaking process has different requirements, but generally includes a brief public notice period, a brief public comment period, reviewed by the Office of Administrative Law, OAL, and an OAL decision. Now, whether you're engaged in the regular or emergency rulemaking processes, an agency or department is still going to be bound to follow the procedural requirements found in the APA, which provisions are contained in the California Government Code. These include requirements such as the contents of the rulemaking record, time frames, and opportunities for public participation in the rulemaking process, again, whether regular or emergency. The term emergency is defined <clears throat> in Government Code Section 11342.545. It's defined to mean a situation that calls for immediate action to avoid serious harm to the public peace, health, safety, or general welfare. Additionally, in Government Code Section 11346.1, it provides a formal process for the adoption, amendment, or even repeal of an emergency regulation. And the state's APA contains specific rules applicable to emergency regulations, including that at least five working days before submitting a regulation to OAL, the adopting agency must send a notice of the proposed emergency action to every person who has requested um, or filed a notice to receive regulatory action proposals by that agency. The notice of an emergency regulation is required to include some specific language. Of course, the language to be adopted in the proposed emergency rulemaking, as well as the actual finding of the emergency. However, an agency is not required to provide notice if the emergency situation clearly poses such a, an immediate serious harm that delaying action to allow public comment would be inconsistent with the public interest. Now, what is the required finding of an emergency <clears throat> as a part of this APA emergency rulemaking? Well, any finding of an emergency must include a written statement that contains specified information as well as a description of the specific facts demonstrating the existence of this emergency and the need for immediate action to take place. Additionally, the agency must demonstrate by substantial evidence that there is a need for the proposed regulation in order to effectuate the statute that's being implemented, interpreted, or being made specific, and to address only the demonstrated emergency in that emergency statement. Moreover, the finding of emergency must identify <clears throat> any technical, theoretical, or empirical study, report, or similar document uh, if the agency has relied upon that. The enactment of an urgency statute by legislature does not in and of itself constitute a need for immediate action by regulation. A finding of emergency based only upon expediency, convenience, best interest, general public need or speculation are all not adequate grounds upon which to demonstrate the existence of an emergency. Now, <clears throat> if the situation identified in the finding of emergency existed and was known by the agency adopting the emergency regulation in sufficient time to have been addressed through a non-emergency regulation, then that finding of emergency must include facts explaining the failure of that agency to address the situation through regular rulemaking. Thereafter, the emergency regulation or order of repeal will become effective upon filing or upon any later date that's specified by the agency in a written document filed with or as a part of the regulation. And finally, an emergency regulation or order of repeal initially adopted as an emergency remains in effect for no more than 180 days. Now, prior to the expiration of that 180 day period, the adopting agency is required to transmit to OAL for filing with the Secretary of State the adopted regulation, amendment, the rulemaking file, 
and a certification of compliance either before the emergency regulation was adopted or within that 180-day period. OEL may approve no more than two extension op uh, options, each for a period not to exceed 90 days of an emergency regulation that's the same as or substantially equivalent to an emergency regulation that was previously adopted by that adopting agency. If an emergency rulemaking is undertaken, a Form 400 is used by the adopting agency. Form 400 contains the proposed text and finding of emergency, and these documents may be revised or withdrawn during the OAL review process. Now, <clears throat> let's turn to how have the courts viewed emergency rulemaking by California's executive branch agencies and departments, and then we'll look at some of the specific OAL regulations on the topic of emergency regulations. Now, initially what constituted, uh, what constitutes an emergency under the APA that permits a state agency to adopt emergency regulations with or without public comment and hearing is generally viewed as a matter for the agency's discretion. And here, the Court of Appeal in 1971 in Shenley Affiliated Brands versus Kirby made that determination. In a later case, they said, uh, sorry, the Court of Appeal said that state agencies may promulgate emergency regulations to confirm state regulations to govern federal law and to end the state's violation of federal law in terms of expenditure of public funds. An agency may, the court said in its discretion, override important public interest embodied by the APA's provisions in allowing notice and comment period to persons who would be affected by new regulations so long as the agency properly concluded that an emergency existed. And this was a 1997 case, Doe versus William uh, Wilson, uh, by the Court of Appeal and review to the Supreme Court, Cal Supreme Court was denied. Now, as I mentioned before, a finding of emergency based upon expediency, convenience, best interest, general public need, or speculation is inadequate. So what do the OAL's regulations on emergency rulemaking provide? There are a handful of them that you should be aware of. First is one, uh, California Code of Regulations, <clears throat> the CCRs, so one CCR section 48. It's titled Notice of Proposed Emergency Action, and it provides that unless the emergency situation clearly poses such an immediate serious harm, that delaying action to allow public comment would be inconsistent with the public interest, then a specified notice must contain the required statement. In one CCR section 50, which is titled Special Requirements for Submission of Emergency Regulatory Actions, this regulation provides that for all emergency regulatory actions that are adopted, the agency must prepare specified documentation, submit copies of all documents, such as the finding of emergency, as well as an estimate of the fiscal impact. Also under section 50, the agency's statement must confirm that the emergency situation addressed by the regulation clearly poses such an immediate serious harm that delaying action to allow notice of public comment would be inconsistent with the public interest. You've heard this a few times now. Also, the statement has to include specific facts demonstrating by substantial evidence that failure of the rulemaking agency to adopt the regulation within the time period required for notice will likely result in serious harm to the public peace, health, safety, or general welfare. The next regulation is 1 CCR Section 52. Section 52 is titled Readoption of Emergency Regulations. And this code, uh, this regulatory section provides that the readoption of an emergency regulation requires sending a notice of the proposed regulatory action, along with a statement providing specific facts that demonstrate by substantial evidence that the agency has made substantial progress and proceeded with diligence, and that the emergency circumstances are unchanged since the initial adoption of the emergency regulation. 
Next, we turn to 1 CCR Section 55. Section 55 is titled OAL Review of Public Comments. This regulatory section provides that OAL may consider comments submitted directly to OAL by the public in connection with an emergency rulemaking review. However, OAL cannot review comments submitted directly to OAL by the public when OAL is reviewing a regular or non-emergency rulemaking action. In order for OAL to review comments submitted directly to them on an emergency rulemaking, the comments are required to be submitted to OAL in writing and received by OAL within five calendar days after the notice of the filing of the proposed emergency regulation is posted by OAL on its internet website, which is www.oal.ca.gov. And the public must simultaneously submit their comments to OAL and the adopting agency. So both get them at the same time. OAL is also required under Section 52 to consider rulemaking agency rebuttals or responses to comments that have been submitted concerning emergency regulations if those comments are submitted to OAL in writing and are received by OAL within eight calendar days after the receipt of the regulations by the adopting agency. And finally, there's one CCR Section 56. And regulatory section 56 is titled Emergency Regulations Adopted After Completion of Rulemaking Procedures. Um, section 56 provides that when a regulation adopted as an emergency is submitted to OAL with the certificate of compliance, as well as the full rulemaking file, then OAL is required to review the emergency statement within 10 days and not file the regulation if OAL determines that the statement fails to satisfy the APA requirements in the government code. Finally, OAL has to review the emergency regulation and rulemaking file within 30 days and order repeal of the regulation if OAL determines that the regulation fails to meet the standards for an emergency regulation or if OAL determines that this regulation has failed to comply with the requirements of the Administrative Procedure Act, i.e. the APA.